to start off, think about easy shapes to make your flower. In this case, for a tulip, we're going to do a squared off shape on top and a rounded shape on the bottom. Then we'll have little spiky shapes right on the bottom of that curved shape. And finally, a stem with two parallel lines. We can create leaves coming out from the side and stretching across. Then perhaps another long leaf going up. These can all meet and cross in the middle. And then you have your basic shape of your tulip. If you want to add another one, that's fine, or you can just stick with one single tulip. I'll quickly sketch another one to the top, maybe with one petal kind of coming out a little bit. And then a nice big leaf arcing up and over that I can have some fun color. So again, if you want to draw one, two, or more, that's just fine. But you want to have long pointed leaves and rounded flowers with the tops squared off. When you're finished with that, let's rough in the petals of the flowers before we try um, any coloring. So the petals of the flowers will start off broad at the bottom and then be narrower at the top. To the side we'll see a pointed top and a curved side and then in the back we'd see the rounded top and really not much else. To the other side of that pointed centered petal we'll see one coming down and around and then there might be room for just one more on the side. You can take a walk in your neighborhood and maybe see some tulips or you can look for pictures online. There are a lot of free web resources looking for pictures that photographers have donated. Morgfile.com, Unsplash.com, and lots more. Once you have your petals roughed out and everything in place and proportional, make sure that the stem looks slender compared to the flowers. Make sure the leaves are broad and flat and the flowers are rounded. Then, before coloring, we can erase a lot of these lines. You can use any eraser. I use a kneaded eraser, um, which can be stretched out to erase a broad area or made into a point to erase a smaller area. Once that's lightly erased, we'll color in a light pink for the blossom and a light yellow-green for the leaves. Now that we have the base colors in and the pencil lines mainly erased, we can start darkening our colors. So on the edges of the petals, we want to be able to see the difference between the petals. And we can add some more realistic shadows. We can use a medium dark pink color. In this case, the color I'm using is called Rose. It is a Prismacolor Premier Pencil. You can be using anything you want. You can be using markers, colored pencils. It doesn't really matter what style or brand. It will be easier to blend if you use soft pencils, like I'm using. But you can still learn to draw using any materials that you want. We'll add a few lines for texture using the darker pink and make sure to leave some of that lighter pink still in view as a shiny highlight along the bottom third of the petal. If you're using soft colored pencils, you can easily press lighter even if you're using harder colored pencils or markers, you can still use layers 
to get different effects. On the petal on the side, I'm going to color in most of it, but leave a little bit of the right side with that lighter pink. You can see I've started blocking in with the medium pink the different areas of the petals. Now, again, I'll need to go in with my red to really make a difference between those petals. The ones in the center or the back will be much darker. The ones in the front will be lighter and have more detail. I can press lighter to get a lighter color and harder to get a little bit darker color or I can add more layers. If you press very hard at the beginning, it will be hard to get more layers because the paper texture will be flattened. If you start off a little bit lighter, you will be able to get layers of color that look very nice. So don't just press hard right away. Start with light layers and build them up. Use at least three different colors, a light, a medium, and a dark and you will have a good result. If you only use one or two colors, you will not get a very complex result like we're trying for here. The bottom and the tips will be a little bit darker and then we'll have that shine somewhere in the middle and we'll go over it with the lighter color so that we can fill in the blanks and blend everything a little bit together. When you've finished with the flowers, you can move on to the leaves. Use a little bit darker green to shade in the center of the leaves or any parts where there would be shadows. The bottom parts of the leaves and the curved insides would be the places where there would be shadows. Once you have all the areas blocked in with the medium green, you can use your lighter green to go back over everything once more. The more layers, the more natural this will look and blended if you're using the softer colored pencils. If you're using harder colored pencils, you may be happy with just two or three layers and then be done with it. With your darker green, you can add in just a touch of color on the bottom or the shadow areas of the leaves just to get that little bit of darker green in there. This helps define the edges of the leaves so we can see the separations between them without using any hard and fast lines. There are no lines in nature but when we're drawing, sometimes we use lines, like with the pencil earlier, to show the shapes of things. But if you can eliminate the lines, you can soften the edges of the shape and make it look more natural. For a final touch, we can use a very dark blue or violet blue color to really get the dark, darkest tones here in the petals. It may seem strange to use blue or purple to shade in colors like red or green, but if you look around you in nature, I think that you'll see some interesting blue tones if you look into the shadows. In art, it's fun to use opposite colors for the shadows. It gives a really nice result if you use colors like red or orange, and then a purple or a blue for the darkest parts or shadows. It doesn't make the flower look purple or blue, it just adds some interest. So if you use that a little bit lightly and in the darkest areas only, I think you'll like the result. If you don't have soft colored pencils or blendable markers to do this, you may want to try it another time or just add a little touch of these dark colors because you won't get exactly the same result if you're not using something blendable. But it's fun to 
give it a try, and see what you can come up with by using unexpected colors. Maybe you could try with your own markers or pencils, combining different colors by layering one on top of the other, and see what you get. You might be surprised and get a good result from your experiments. For today, I think this tiny touch of this bluish purple finishes off my flowers really nicely, and I can add just a little bit of touch of the same color into the darkest parts of the leaves for a better contrast. Then we're done with our beautiful flowers, and you can even try looking at flowers in your neighborhood or online to get inspiration for your next project.